Yes, boys, that's all we can do. Once you experience winning the America's Cup, it changes you, it changes your team. And so now we're ready. We're ready for something very different, something very new, something very fresh and very exciting. I told you that this was going to be different, very new. This is a new team. Red Bull will bring wings to Alinghi. We created uh, a team from a partnership with Red Bull, and we're very proud of this uh, fantastic new team we're announcing today. We were sailing the Extreme 40s. We were sailing the GC32s, hard competition on the water against them, but more or less very good friends on shore and we more or less share the same values. As a professional sailor, the America's Cup, the event is the biggest what you can achieve in, in our sport. Good morning everybody, good morning. Uh, good morning Ernesto and Hans Peter. I'm, I'm sorry my voice <laughs> from shouting at the television at uh, Max Verstappen and, and maybe a little bit to do with the party afterwards is a little bit croaky, but uh, great to be with you this morning. This is the Sailing World on Water, December 17th, 2021. Here are the highlights in the sport of sailing, filmed in the last seven days. The big news last week is the official entry into the 37th America's Cup, by Swiss multi-billionaire, Ernesto Bertorelli, and his all-new, Alinghi, Red Bull racing team. Announcing this all-Swiss team, there were a few recognizable faces at the club. They included his longtime friend, Brad Butterworth, and Red Bull foiling sailor, Hans-Peter Steinacker. There was little detail at this stage, but Christian Horner, principal of Red Bull Racing, was beamed in from the UK suffering, as his team had just won the 2021 F1 World Championships. This is a formidable announcement as there have been names like, Bowling, Tuke, Spithill, Slingsby, mentioned in passing. Wherever Ernesto goes, he always creates great interest and the AC, 37, is no different. Meanwhile, Ineos, Britannia, have lifted the lid on their design team, and announced that Martin Fisher, ex Luna Rossa, is their chief designer. In the last Vendee Globe, British solo racer, Pip Hare, distinguished herself and her American sponsor Medallia, has backed her by buying Bureau Valley 2, which was sailed by French skipper Louis Burton into third in the last Vendee Globe. Here she is in full refit mode as the start is only two years away. In Oman the Oman 2021 Youth Sailing World Championships is being held. A total of 433 sailors from 56 nations are entered in 11 youth events including the male and female divisions of the 29S Skiff, the 420, two-person dinghy, ILCA6, one-person dinghy, along with the mixed two-person multi-hull, the NACRA 15. The superstars were in town for this year's Super Cup. There were Olympic gold medalists, Sail GP, and America's Cup champions, competing last Friday afternoon. The superstars of the 18s and sailing, included, Nathan Wilmot, Nathan Outeridge, Ian Jensen, Adam Bischel, Luke Parkinson, David Witt, 
Dan Phillips, John Winning, Sean Langman, Trevor Barnabas, Hugh Stoddart, Ewan McNichol, and Andrew Devola, who were at the club ready for their annual, three-race, Super Cup Series, on Sydney Harbour. Now over to the Alinghi, Red Bull announcement. This is uh, really exciting to announce a new team, a fresh beginning for Alinghi with Red Bull. This is going to be called the Alinghi Red Bull Racing Team, and uh, it's really a partnership. This is two very strong sporting legends coming together, forming a new entity. We're going to benefit from each other. We're going to feed from each other. You know, the America's Cup is a technology challenge. I think there's a lot of synergies between uh, what Red Bull does in Formula One and what we have done uh, with the America's Cup. What can we do take from Formula One and, and help these guys? And Ernesto and Hans Peter came and saw what we're capable of. And um, so we're going to take Formula One DNA and we're going to use it, uh, you know, within the boat. And uh, there's so much synergy between what we do on track and and, uh, you know, this kind of racing. And, um, you know, we're going up against Mercedes and Ineos on the water and maybe Ferrari as well. So uh, the competition spills over from the track and that's, that's exciting. And so many people within, you know, Red Bull Racing, Red Bull Advanced Technology, so passionate about this project um, that, uh, you know, we're, we're just tremendously excited and very proud to be part of this and part of this announcement today. Yeah, the cooperation with Alenghi now, it's on the table. I think we were working 24 years about this now, and now it's happening. We are more or less the underdogs at the moment. We, we have five years, uh, what we have to pick up from the others, but at the end, we will be a strong team. We will put all our effort into it, all our synergies, what we have. And at the end, we have a sailboat race which, uh, high, which will be a very high level, and we will compete there, and we try to win the cup. My name is Martin Fischer, and I'm the chief designer of uh, Ineos uh, Britannia. It is my responsibility to determine the direction in which we want to go, to push the limit of these machines even further. The interest for making boats go fast, I don't know where it comes from, I was always fascinated by quick boats, uh, especially catamarans, so when I was young I started sailing catamarans and uh, the speed really fascinated me and I thought it, always it was really amazing how fast one could go just with the wind and I really tried to push that as far as possible. I'm a physicist, so I studied physics with a, with a focus on uh, fluid dynamics. And after that, I did a PhD in geophysics. Boat design always had interested me, and at some stage, I, I decided to, to do that uh, full time. And then I moved to Italy for the work with, uh, with Luna Rossa. The current AC75s, they are very complicated and very advanced sailing boats that's not comparable with anything else. The rig, the hull, from outside, uh, you don't see the complexity in there. The most uh, complicated part are the control systems, especially for the control systems for the foils. So that's really very, very difficult mechanical engineering. But what we saw in Auckland was that proper match racing was possible with, with these boats. So I think that was the first time that uh, we saw proper match racing at 40 plus knots. I'm very excited to have the possibility to, to work now on the second generation of these boats. The class rules more or less the same as last time, so it will be a second generation boat, but uh, there's still plenty of work. I think it is possible to make gains everywhere. Every single piece on the boat can be improved and we will work on that to, to improve every aspect of it. That's our work for the next three years or so. The last five months of early training on Medallia have just flown by. It's already December and it's time for us to go into our winter refit. 
Unbelievably, the wind has dropped for us today, which is fantastic. We've got a massive day ahead. We're gonna take the mast out, we're gonna lift the boat, take the keel off, the foils off, and by the end of the day, this little girl is gonna be in that shed over there, ready for three months of preparation so we can smash racing next season. <laughs> We've moved Medallia into the dock uh, and we're just preparing now to take the mast out. And what Joff and the team are doing at the moment is measuring where the slings for the travel hoist need to be on the boat. So within the boat, there's areas of reinforcement. And when we pick the boat up from the bottom, we need to make sure that the slings are exactly on those areas. So Joff has just marked this one with a cable tie here and he's measuring out the other side so when the travel hoist comes in, we know exactly where to pick it up. We're just in the final preparations for lifting the mast out now. So behind me, you can see the team from TT rigging are just protecting the ends of our deck spreaders. So the crane is taking the weight of the mast, it's lent it back slightly so that we can unload these shrouds at the side. And now the deck spreaders pop out because um, they get lifted with the mast together. So it's all about kind of making sure this whole package is well protected, everything's nicely tied in, and then we can do the final lift of the mast out and off the boat. As expected, that all happens really quickly. And here she comes, uh, Medallia on our way to get the keel off. What's been really great this morning is actually our team working together. Um, and we're kind of at full size for our team at the moment. This month we recruited two junior preparators. Alex started at the beginning of the month. This is Will's first week of work. And it's been really great watching this morning the knowledge transfer between the more experienced members of our team down to the junior preparators. And all this work has just happened so slickly and so well. It, it makes me dead proud to be part of the team. You can see Medallia is up in the air now and we are getting ready to remove the keel. Um, so Joff's up on the scaffolding there, uh, he's taking the fairing off uh, around the keel so we can see the keel pin and the bearings are exposed. Um, that's the first step and then we'll come in with a, a frame underneath the keel to take the weight of the keel, we'll take the pin out from inside the boat and then we can lift the boat off the keel. Just as the light is starting to go, we're down to the final part of the job. So we managed to get the keel off, fought us a little bit there, but, but 
now the boat's down low so we can reach the foils. We're going to extend the foils out, disconnect them inside the boat and then we can actually physically take the full foils out of the boat which means it will be able to fit into the shed for the winter. It's just gone 5 p.m. and we've finally finished. It's so difficult with these winter days, you're fighting the light all the time. That was an epic day's work. Medallia is behind me, completely bare of all her appendages. And that's a wrap. Welcome to the 2021 Youth World. Going all the way up. Ah, I'm going all the way up. It's really nice to be out here with the team and to meet lots of new people. Ah, everything that holds me down. No, no. It's gonna be amazing and it's gonna be funny. Uh, it's so amazing to be here and I'm excited to race. I actually moved out of the Optimus quite early, so I moved in when I was about 12. Would you believe it? All these girls are the best of their country, so you know it's quite an honour to be sailing against all of them. This is my first Youth World Championship, and I'm really happy to be here. I've got my eyes on the British, uh, Greek, and France, but you know everyone's really good here. Well, we won the Under-17 World Championships in 2019, and this year we won the second place. All the sailors is very good, and the level is hard. It uh, will be a very difficult regatta, but I hope finish in the first three places. Welcome viewers, Sydney Harbour Super Cup invitation event, 18 footers Sydney Harbour with some legends of the sport for a couple of quick sprints on a Friday night. What could possibly go wrong? I'm Andrew Buckland. I'm joined in comedy today by Joan Fury and Michael Coxon Jr, skipper of the mighty Smeg. Coco, you're allowed to show your bias today. Who's operating your machine today, mate? It's well, we've got the... Um the famous Trevor Barnabas, but he's he's not only operating that, he's got along with him um, his two, well, his, his son and grandson, which I think is probably, probably a first, no doubt, I think in nearly any sport, to have three generations um, sailing a competitive boat. So uh, I think he's pretty happy. And um, we've, got, we've got the entourage out, Bucko, from Smeg, including Emma, all the way, he's come in from Italy too, which he was uh, really excited to come down here given he used to sponsor Trevor back in the early days, yeah. No, it's pretty fantastic, isn't it? And, and for those of you uh, who aren't perhaps aware, um, Trevor's recently sort of allegedly fully retired and started, commenced the circumnavigation of Australia in a nice, beautiful carbon fibre catamaran that he bought, but didn't get very far, you were saying, Cocker. Well, oh, I guess COVID's played, played a part of that, and Trevor was saying in the park earlier he's got to stop saying uh, yes to people who ask him Asked him to do a bit of building work, so I think he's pretty keen, and, and his wife Gail's pretty keen to get a bit further than Palm Beach. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, and uh, you know, I spent a little bit of time talking to him about the East Coast of Australia, but I don't think he did go and buy all the charts, so there's ambition, right? Oh, is that, he's got the charts, he's been tweaking it, it's got everything that opens and shuts and um, ready to go. He just, I think he's itching to actually get out of there. <laughs> it's a very nice bit of kit. 
Okay, so the rest of the fleet, Jimmy, one of the more interesting uh, entrants, if you like, Nathan Wilmot steering shore and partners today, gold medalist, obviously, with longtime crew Malcolm Page. Um, I ran into Page just before at yep. Middle RBI Club, and he said he hasn't answered one phone call from Nathan Wilmot when he when it got announced. He knew what the phone call was about, so he's going to ring him back tonight. Oh, sorry, I missed your call. One of those. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. And from the mighty 16-footer club of Manly, Dolly Davola steering the Rag and Famish. Yeah, the great Dolly. It'll be good to see him back out. He nearly won it last year. Um, and then, yeah, it was. Uh, he's our the junior coach from Manly 16s. Does a very good job down there. But um, the guys there on screen, I think that's the uh, the one that's not in the way. We'll just wait for Smink to go think. past, and there you go, Nakes Blue. <coughs> what do you yeah, think of them? That's David Witt, Tom yeah. and Tom. So it's an old, old dream team that the uh, they finished. On mine, right? They were finished a close second, I think it was, with against Napo, or yeah. might have got pipped into a third, but um, went into the last day with those three going for it. So I think Witty, Witty's hoping this, um, these dark clouds down south start rolling in. No. Well, look in the angle. Lazarus went up the beat at it. It is just a shoot, yeah. Yeah. Well, Lazarus setting down. Yeah. So they've got enough margin they can set and pull it off if they have to. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. As of last time, they all got all right, sucked if they up can stay the upright. Yeah, they're good. Good recovery. <laughs> Here we go. The breeze has just lifted off on these three at the top yeah. mark, hasn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a big spiky bit... one just going over the camera boat right now. Yeah. So for the viewers, here's a bit of Sydney Harbour bad. Spiky wind just absolutely lifted off. The boats were briefly stationary. And the next puff... Is rotated in about 18 knots. So it looks like Tech 2 underlaid that. Tech 2 short. Yep. Smeg around now. In a reasonable, reasonable little puff here. Questionably, will they set? There's a big Absolutely. Out of here. Yeah, they'll set. Yeah, they'll set. Witty round now. Will, the notes. Hold on, will Witty set? That's the big question. Oh, oh yes. Yes, oh, no. no. He's Smeg's got gone. Oh, no. Smeg's gone. Oh. Witty will be going for it 100%. Just off screen, yeah. Smeg got the kite up, but then not sure what happened, got actually. Got that tack in the water, I think, Michael. Was it? Yep. Yeah. So Tech 2 in hot pursuit of Noakes. So they're going the set, and Witty will match them, no doubt. Lazarus have had to knock off their shoot down near the finish, and they're going to two-sail up. Wow. Oh. See how much water came out of Noakes Blue shoot on the set of <laughs> three gallons. Oh, Smeg's there for a little while, Congo. <laughs> yeah, they're just trying to get away that that kite. They're all good. Ron Tech 2, some nice aerial shots now. Looks like they'll be fine. They should lay this to the finish. screen but Lazarus has just gone across the line to win the race. And Noakes and um, Noakes in a comfortable second. Well I shouldn't say comfortable. He's got Tech 2 breathing down his neck but it should be okay just across the finish line. He's got one little little heading puff coming in about 30 seconds which might cause him a bit of grief. Good day out, really, isn't it? Yeah. What, is, what is remarkable when you watch the races, Coco, from this platform is just how close the boat's speeds are, you know, straight line downwind, except Tech 2's got a little more than everybody else, or has had. A little more pace? Yep, just a frack. Everybody else the same speed, more or less? Uh, he'll, he'll change his technique, I think. He'll start really? sitting in. Start sitting in. <laughs> it's working for Woody. Yeah, right, <laughs> When you're fast, new and light, Coco, you know. Yes. As yeah. we said at the beginning, so Tech 2 third. As you said at the beginning, boats don't, sometimes they start off perfectly, they don't get any better, they get slower as they age. That's true. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, wine glass is coming oh. out now. <laughs> Stick her up, brother. Yeah, it looks comfortable made to the finish the now. Distance. Yeah. for the 
Yeah, and Whitty sort of snuck back up in the second. That would be enough for him to um, clinch it, I'm sure. I think a four, a three and a two, yeah. Oh, here goes Lazarus. No. Just a big lull. Rescued by the sheet hand. Yeah, it does probably need a bit of that. He's had a few Christmas parties of late, I've heard. <laughs> a lot of these skiff guys get out and do the... Um, been doing a bit of the maxis, you know. Um, Marcus, is, you've probably spoken about it before, but a bit of a team there on the 72. I think three quarters of them are 18 foot skiff sailors. I don't no, know no, if that's good or bad. I don't know how well that goes offshore in, a, in an no, ocean. No, I think they're pretty good, you know. Yeah, no, it is. I think they've got the um, the wise mothy on board too, don't they? Yeah, they've got a mixture of young and old and, yeah. and some very experienced people.